Yesterday was the worst possible day. If you're an Eagles fan, if you're an Eagles fan. But if you're a fan of the division, if you want to boast that the NFC East is the best division in football, this was it. Home to Shields, it is a happy good morning to the NFC East. Just like the Philadelphia Phillies, the NFC East oh. did not lose on Sunday. <laughs> you know, the Eagles didn't even lose because they didn't play. So, yeah, if, if you're an NFC East fan, I'm just going to say this to everybody out there. Yesterday was the worst possible day if you're an Eagles fan. If you're an Eagles fan. But if you're a fan of the division, if you want to boast that the NFC East is the best division in football, this was it. So, Jeff Kerr from CBS Sports here with my man, Tone DeShields, my quarterback. Tone, um, we're in a really good mood, as you can tell by our hat. <sighs> Listen, man, this is what dreams are made of. This is this is this is what these moments are made of, man. Um, first things first, before we get into some football, we know this is a football show, right, Jeff? We know we get that, but you gotta acknowledge greatness. This Philadelphia Phillies team, they they are heading to the World Series. I can't believe it. I was at the game Friday. I still can't believe it. Um, I've been a season ticket holder for the Phillies for over 15 years now. It's, I mean, pretty much every ever since this is Bank Ballpark exists and I was old enough to consistently go to games on my own dime, it's, I've had season tickets. And, man, I, I'll tell you what, Tone, it, this is one of those years where I didn't expect anything. I just enjoyed the ride. I think I was more happier they made the playoffs than I was yesterday when they won the National League because – I, I don't scream much during games, but when I do, it counts. I will say this. I screamed a lot louder when they made the playoffs than I actually did yesterday. I think yesterday was like, oh, my God, like, I, I can't believe it. I'm on cloud nine right now. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. The Phillies continue to stay hot. But this NFC East, man, are they even hotter? It's three teams <laughs> right now. It's, it's, it's really fascinating to watch, right? As much as we could talk about our Philadelphia Phillies, you know, this NFC East, man, the Eagles had their bye week, but Cowboys win, Giants win, Commanders win. Who who, who would have thought the NFC East would be exactly where it is today going into week eight, finishing up with week seven of the NFL season? And, you know, I want to start you off with the Cowboys game. Now, the Cowboys beat the Lions 24 to six. And once again, the defense won the day. Five sacks forced five turnovers, three fumbles, two interceptions, and Dak Prescott made his return, and he was pretty efficient, completing 76% of his passes, 207 passing yards, one passing touchdown at the bitter end. But what's really interesting about this game, and I don't want Cowboys fans to get too ahead of themselves, the Lions kept this game very close into the final three minutes of the game, and then they committed two awful turnovers, I believe, and the Cowboys were able to score 14 points in the final two minutes, putting the game completely to rest. So let's be honest, that score was really 10-6 before it became 24-6. But what was your reaction to the Dallas Cowboys, and how did they get it done? I thought the Cowboys were efficient yesterday, Tone. I'll say that. Even when it was 10-6, and look, Detroit had that bad fumble in the red zone yesterday that I think really hurt them, the Jamal Williams fumble. at the, I think it was the two-yard line. I, I thought that was one of the differences in the game. But overall, I mean, they were efficient yesterday. I, I know the numbers – don't look great. Only 330 total yards, three and nine on third down. But hey, I I don't think I really don't know if Dallas wins that game if Cooper Rush starts. If I'm going to be honest with you, I I liked how they kept the same game plan. It's like okay, Dak, you're going to be a game manager today. We know what you can do, but let's get the ball to Tony Pollard. Let's get the ball to Ezekiel. By the way, he's kind of hit a, a little. I, I mean, he's still young, but it's kind of like 2016, 2017 Ezekiel, Elliott, especially in the red zone. Right. But, Man, so that defense is just unbelievably good. Don't test Trayvon Diggs. Don't test Micah Parsons. Uh, I, I mean, Parsons had two sacks yesterday. Uh, Williams had two sacks yesterday. Man, it, it's uh, – oh, no, sorry. Parsons had one sack. But still, um, uh, Jordan – losing Jordan Lewis is going to be big for Dallas, obviously, for those of you who did watch that game. Um, I, I had the – I did the Giants game yesterday, so I didn't get to see too much of Dallas. But when I rewatched it last night – I will say this. I think they're the second best team in the NFC, Tone. And I, I think it's the Eagles. And I think it's the Cowboys. And that's kind of everybody else. Yeah, you know, it's funny because a lot of people thought the San Francisco 49ers would be in that 
top two, top three uh, echelon, you know, with the Eagles and the Cowboys. Because I think we talked about this before, you know, um, I, I think the, the Cowboys and the Eagles are the top three or two of the top three teams in the NFC. Um, but, the, but the 49ers lost yesterday and they got waxed by the Kansas City Chiefs. But that's another story for another day. But, you know, the Cowboys, once again, their defense and, you know, it's something to be said about it. I'm not sure how far it'll take them in the grand scheme of things, but I think this was a I think this was a good comeback win for Dak Prescott coming off of the injury. This was the perfect tune up match, I guess you'll say. Yeah, and he wanted this game. Ed Werder reported yesterday, like this was the game he wanted to come back, that he felt he was gonna be held. I, I think a lot of it had to do with okay, I get to face the Lions defense yesterday, but you're right. It was a close game for the majority of this game, and the Lions just shot themselves in the foot with turnovers, and yeah. Jared Goff turned into Jared Goff again. Jared Goff's been playing well for the majority of the year, but ever since Detroit had that game against the Patriots, they, they, they haven't been the same team. Uh, you know, they, they were a team that was scoring a lot of points. They couldn't stop anybody. Now they're kind of stopping people, but they don't score now. It, it's the size of a 1-5 in five football team, if you want to be honest. I don't want to overblow the win too much, but Dallas yeah. did what they had to do at home to win a football game and to keep pace with, I, I mean, there are two games beyond the, well, technically a game and a half because the Eagles didn't play, but the, the Eagles own the tiebreaker over them right now. They, they needed to win yesterday. Absolutely. You know, let's transition to the New York Giants, right? They won 23-17 uh, over the Jacksonville Jaguars. They improved to 6-1, and 3-0 and on the road. And, you know, they've, Another team that's really been, another team has just been surprising you time and time again and just been finding ways to win. And this was another nail biter through and through. Um, ten fourth quarter points scored in the final six minutes of the game for the Giants. So they were able to really, you know, uh, bear down and really lock in. And Dane Jones had another game that we didn't really expect him to have. Over 300 yards of total offense, uh, two touchdowns. And the story of the game for, for me was – the 236 rushing yards for the New York Giants and the fact that they won time of possession by a pretty a pr- pretty good margin, an efficient win, another efficient win for the NFC East. Uh, what was your thoughts on that game? So this is a weird game for me, Tone, because I thought the, the Jaguars did plenty to lose this game. Uh, Travis Etienne's fumble at the five-yard line. Uh, Doug Pearson, for some reason, Doug Pearson did not challenge the spot in the fourth quarter when – the Jaguars were up 17-13. Uh, let me just break it down here. So what Doug Pearson did was he did a direct snap to Travis Etienne. It looked like Etienne got the first down. Doug didn't challenge it, didn't challenge the spot. I thought it was a bad spot, didn't challenge it, didn't really do anything, just assumed they were going to get the fourth down. Trevor Lawrence didn't get the sneak, and then the Giants went on a drive to, to end up taking the lead with five minutes left. And then, yeah, again, Tony, it, it, it's just frustrating, like, what Jacksonville does to lose games. I think they're a lot better. Don't get me wrong, but this was this game was a microcosm of the Giants season, right? So no turnovers for Daniel Jones. He's the first Giants quarterback to run for a hundred yards in the game since Ed Donowski in 1934. So yeah, if you know who Ed Donowski is good for you, but Giants quarterbacks don't run for a hundred yards in the game. He was efficient. Saquon Barkley had the quietest over 10 yards I ever seen, but and this is a guy who covered the game and Man, he, he was just efficient, too. Efficient, good. The Giants just do what they have to do. They let other teams beat each other, and they take advantage of it. And they wear teams down, and come the fourth quarter, they are a dangerous football team. If you want to beat the Giants, you've got to get a huge lead on them early. Jacksonville had a chance to do that. They didn't do it, Tone. And so here's another crazy stat for you with the Giants. This is how crazy their season is, by the way. In games where they trail in the fourth quarter, the last five years when they were the worst team in football, they were three and fifty-eight. They're four and one this year. Wow, wow! <laughs> and you know, they the offensive line shockingly had a pretty good game, right? They only gave up one sack, but they did have some casualties. Evan Neal went down, and uh, I believe they lost Daniel Bellinger as well, uh, a, t- a rookie tight end. So, you know, Evan Neal's a, Evan Neal's a huge loss for them. I'm not sure how long he'll be out. Um, I'm not exactly sure how 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 serious it is. But you mentioned Saquon Barkley, a quiet 100-yard game, but averaged over four yards a carry. And a big, he had a big run yesterday too. He had a couple yeah. of big runs. His one cutback actually set up um, 
the Giants uh, go ahead touchdown and uh, deep in uh, Jaguars territory. But you're right. Yeah. I'm glad you point out the Evan Neal loss. They lost him around the third quarter or so. I'm like, man, you know, at one point they did not have their starting right tackle. They did not have Dory Jackson, their starting quarterback, or they, they did not have Daniel Bellinger, their starting tight end. And they already got a bunch of injuries already right. uh, in the secondary at defensive end. I'm like, how can this team do it? How can this team withstand it? They're only lost this year to the Cowboys. And they, I mean, really, I think that's what everybody kind of thinks of the Giants right now. It's well, they got blown out by the Cowboys in Monday Night Football. But if you watch all their games, they just just don't beat themselves. They they're like a well oiled machine. No right turnovers, now. no yeah. turnovers, no sacks. You know, no not too many negative plays. And then when you have a guy like Daniel Jones who has the ability to escape, you know, he's not shifty. But he had, but he has, you know, straight line speed where he can, you know, get away from you. He's he's twitchy. So, Daniel Jones with eleven carries for over a hundred yards, averaging almost ten yards a carry. That's what did it for the Jacksonville Jaguars. That tells me they couldn't get off the field on third down, and they kept allowing themselves to get gashed, especially on that on that final drive. You know, Daniel Jones tripped again yesterday. <laughs> Doesn't he go away? Like so, I mean, this one was it was as too bad tall as, Jones. I should start calling him too tall it, Jones. It, it, it was as bad as the one in Philadelphia because <laughs> he might have been tripped up, but himself. But if he doesn't trip over himself, he scores a touchdown on the one third down run. And I'm like, oh my god, Daniel Jones did it again. Like it, but they're not a comedy of errors anymore. And I, I, I honestly don't. I, and I did this for week seven over reactions and reality checks for CBS. I do that every Sunday. Mm-hmm. I put as one of them, Daniel Jones should get another shot as a starting quarterback in 2023. And I said it's reality because he's not doing anything to lose his job. Yeah, that's that, that's the that's the really interesting part because they didn't renew his uh contract, nor did they pick up his fifth-year option. So this is what they can do. Daniel Jones understands that he's not in any bargaining position. He has zero leverage. Let's be totally real about it. So if they're not sold on this quarterback class – because they're not going to be at this rate, they're not going to be in position for a top 10 pick at this well, rate. That's all right. <laughs> exactly. I don't see them being in position for any one of these quarterbacks, like a CJ Stroud or um, Bryce Young. They're not going to be in position for one of those guys. So, this is what they can do. And then we're going to transition into the Commanders game, which is one of the more fascinating wins of the weekend. But this is what they can do they can extend Dane Jones, you know, give him, you know, give him an, another a one year extension, you know, give him another one year on his deal. Or even two years, if they're you know if they're feeling a little bit more confident, and it doesn't have to be a a a bank buster, you know you don't have to you know you don't have to break the bank with it. Um, but let him know, hey, listen, we want to we want to add another another couple more years in, on, onto it. Let's see if he can continue to elevate because let's be totally real, this is the highest quality of coaching he's ever received. So you can make an argument we haven't even seen the best Daniel Jones yet, and you can make an argument that his ceiling is kind of unclear. Because he hasn't really gotten solid coaching, because he's had like three or four different head coaches since he's been in New York, no stability at all. So there's something to be said about that. You know, stability breeds success, in my opinion. And they don't have to be in the rush based off of the way they're winning games. Now, sure, we're going to see as the season progresses, as the competition gets stiffer, once they play the Eagles, they're going to they're going to be able to see where they are. You know, they got they beat, this week too. They got Seattle. Yeah. They got to against Seattle. Seattle. Seattle beat the Chargers. And, and, they're, and they put up like, 37 place. points. <laughs> yeah. San Fran lost. You know, it's, you know, this is a really wacky NFL season, which in my opinion just means that it's that much more wide open for the Philadelphia Eagles. But, you know, the Washington Commanders, you know, we have about five more minutes until, uh, until our break and then we'll be able to get Mike Gill in the building. Um, but the Commanders, man, beating the Packers 23 to 21. Wow. That's 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 all I can say, man. That's all I can say about this game. Uh, I can I can I can say more though. If Carson Wentz is in this game, they don't win. Yeah, I, I, you know what? You brought this to me uh, pre-production here, Tony, and I just keep thinking to myself, you know what? You're right. The Commanders were efficient yesterday, efficient on both sides of the ball, but. Mm-hmm. Look at what Taylor Heineke did. I'm, I'm pulling up the stats right now. So 20 and 33, 201 yards, two touchdowns. And there's a, I just felt like there was more of, I guess you could say a fire in that team. Like, did you see Taylor Heineke yesterday? He gets the one first down and when he's on the sideline, he's getting everybody all fired up. He's getting the crowd all fired up. I mean, the Washington crowd is what it is at this point. Right. But I feel like there was life 
in FedEx Field because of Heineke. It, yeah. It's like they know what they're getting. They know that it's efficient. Is Taylor Heineke a franchise quarterback? Hell no. But he's also a guy that kind of captivated that franchise in that city because he took them – I'll be of 7-9. He did take them to a playoff game in 2020, and they almost won that playoff game. But 7-16 on third down – 5.1 yards per play. I mean, this is the best they played defensively all year, and I, I really got to bring this to you, too, Tony. Are the Packers just not good? The, and that's that's what I that's what I wanted to get to. I listen. This is the, the Packers have lost to the Giants. They've lost to the Commanders. Uh, they've lost to uh, the Vikings. They lost to the Jets. The highest quality loss. It's probably the Vikings because the Vikings are what five and one right now or six and one, something like that. So that was the highest quality loss, if that makes sense. But when you lose to the Giants, Jets, and Commanders three years in a row, I mean three, three weeks in a row, excuse me, you're a bad team. I'm sorry. You 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 you're you're a bad football team. You allowed yourself to lose to three, in my opinion, less than organizations three weeks in a row. That 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 honestly just can't happen. But Washington, they dominated time of possession. And you said something really, really fascinating. They played in a very efficient game. But even more than that, you they knew what they were getting out of Taylor Haneke. And that team knows how to play with Taylor Haneke. Taylor Haneke understands, that, understands the personnel. He got the ball. He got the ball to, I want to say, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oh, about 10 different guys. 10 different guys touched that ball. About yes. 10 different guys touched that ball. About seven to ten guys touched that ball on offense. Carson Wentz, you don't, you don't, you don't get you don't get that effect with him. And he just didn't do much to lose the game. You know, and you saw an offense that had some level of an identity yesterday, right? They ran the ball well, 166 rushing yards. And Terry McLaurin had his best game of the season. And it wasn't even the greatest game, but 73 yards, five catches, one touchdown. And he had his best game of the year. And yeah, it's, 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 it shocks me how Carson Wentz wasn't able to maximize uh, to um, Terry McLaurin. It, it shocks me, honestly. So this is the one thing I, I think I noticed when I rewatched the game last night. I think this is what Washington wanted to do at the beginning of the season. But obviously, Brian Robinson had that unfortunate incident where he got shot twice in the leg. But mm -hmm. Robinson was going to be the number one back. He was. So you had him, you had Gibson, right? By the way, Heineke's touchdown pass to Gibson. I I don't I really don't know if Antonio Gibson's ever gone out wide and caught a touchdown pass down the scene before, but he did. Uh, I don't think that happens to Carson Wentz, but you saw how Washington wanted to run their offense with Taylor Heineke. They became a run first team. The Packers are gonna play cover two zone. They're all for it because that that just shapes up running the football, controlling the game, controlling time of possession, and they just methodically moved down the field. And keep in mind, Washington almost blew this game yesterday, too. I oh, mean, yeah, sure. This, this final score, like, it's kind of deceiving because they were up nine with 640 left, and they dominated the whole second half. I don't know what is wrong with the Packers. Like, they could not run the football yesterday. They only had, what, 30, 38 yards rushing. They only 12 had attempts, though. I mean, 12 attempts is not going to – build up any equity with your running backs. <laughs> you know what I mean? Why are they – why do they want to throw all the time Aaron Rodgers? Like, are they just trying to justify a $50 million contract at this point? I'm telling you, and I've been saying this for a while, I don't think Matt LaFleur is a good coach. I think he's a guy who inherited a very, very, very lucrative situation. Uh, his 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 best years, obviously, was when Aaron, uh, Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams were, you know, doing their thing. Now Devontae Adams is not there, and Rodgers doesn't have his go-to guy. They don't have them. They don't have any wide receivers. They don't really have any tight ends. All they have is really is a running back and, uh, and Aaron Jones, and they don't even give him the ball. So now you're at the end of the day, you're trying to lean on Aaron Rodgers is forty, right? Uh, he's close to forty. I think he's thirty-nine this year. So yeah, you're, you're not. Far. You're, you're, you're leaning on one of the o, one of the OGs when it comes to quarterbacks. Not saying his talent is de his talent has depleted, but he but but he but he's aging. He's aging, and that's pretty much what it is. And you 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 just you just can't 
continue to put him in situations like that. But overall, I just don't think they're a good team. But we have our guy Mike Gill um, in the green room right now. Jeff, I'm really excited to hear what you guys have to say about this NFC East and these Phillies, man. But any final thoughts before we hit this break? You know, like I wanted to mention the Chiefs before we went on break. Did you notice like when the Chiefs traded Tyreek Hill, what they did was, okay, we're going to sign Juju Smith-Schuster. We're going to sign Marquez valdez Scanlon, And they're right. getting better every single week because they, they got guys that are like, they're not sexy names, but they can make plays. And now you're seeing them make plays. The Packers, they say, you know what, we're going to draft Christian Watson. Doesn't play. Romeo Dobbs does play, but he's inconsistent. He's a rookie. The, the Packers just didn't do enough to replace Devontae Adams. At all. At all. But – you guys are locked in on Good Morning NFC East. He's Jeff Kerr. I'm your guy, Tony Schultz II. Next up, we have our guy, Mike Gill. Keep it locked, you guys. You don't want to miss this.